back everybody touching base back on ashes of creation as a game that i am well looking forward to as as primarily an mmo player i've been playing mmos for the past about 20 years or so been a video gamer for almost all all of basically all of my life from my teenage years up until up until now still gaming till this very day i've always liked rpgs and really always enjoyed the immersion that you got from it especially with online MMOs nowadays that we have access to, is very limited and few and far between. Thankfully, we're seeing a little bit of an update with Ashes of Creation, which is one of the things that I enjoy. The developers are really keeping the excitement for this game going as it releases content basically month after month. And this, of course, is footage from their September release uh, showing about the development update and, of course, the early aquatic mount footage. But there was also a lot of things that I was able to glean um, from the video that they released. It's about... 114 minutes of content uh, that they released previously with their aquatic mounts and then of course going into a little bit of an in-depth of discussion ashes of creation one of the things that i really enjoyed looking at the or is it about the 950 mark with ashes of creation there we go so playing the video one thing that i really enjoyed was of course looking at the beautiful textures the game itself looks very beautiful beautiful backgrounds you can see in the background there's a little bit of uh, trees swaying you can see both the shadows swing uh, basically that the trees are, are displaying that they're moving back and forth and of course you can see it in the background of course you have the beautiful shadows as well as of course the water reflection also we get a nice little glimpse into the different variations of shields that are basically going to be into the game we see different maces and swords and of course we get an up close look at what looks like different types of armors it looks a lot more like heavy armor some perhaps some chain mail uh, of course really shows that there is a lot of quality being put we see a little a little bit of a uh, an animal in the background and of course more importantly is she we see there's a lot a lot of diversity of course within this game in terms of the amount of content right in terms in terms of armor types there's going to be a wide variation they do show some of them later on in the video with both light armor and leather armor i think this is looks this this looks more like perhaps chain and heavy armor a, a wide array we've got three different types of shield we've got different colorations and textures as you can see both of these shields right here look basically the same but of course you can see the texture this looks like it has like dragon scales on it and the other one of course just looks like it's re it's a regular metal shield and then of course a little bit later on into the video we get to see the different type of mounts and of course this is basically the, basically the first like say about first 35 to 40 minutes of this video is basically talking about mounts and of course we we do get to see um, a bunch of different mounts that are going to be there's going to be flying mounts that are going to have certain types of restrictions basically um again the lead the lead developer for the game was a lineage two player and so for those who are like positions of like governors or they own certain territories kind of like in lineage two where only the guild leader who owned a castle could have access to a flying mount and so that they said that there's going to be some sort of restrictions that are basically tied to uh, the pvp system like if you own certain nodes then of course the guild leader of who owns that node will have access to different sorts of flying mounts they also talk about that there's going to be different tiers of mounts some of these mounts of course will have abilities like they have like mule type mounts that can carry more there's some mounts that of course that they talk about here um, at the 16 minute mark we'll get a little bit of information about the different sort of uh, underwater mounts they have like this underwater sea turtle that can also go on land but of course certain mounts move a little faster on land than of course they do on water this particular one of course is designed more for uh, water movement than it is for land as you can see that it gets really really slow by comparison to what it is um, underwater there's also going to be ships that they've stated in this video as well as underwater uh, underwater dungeons there's going to be a lot of underwater content that is going to be added and of course there's also going to be like naval ships there's going to be uh, e both nodes and content for both pvp and pve that's going to be um, out in, out basically out in sea and as well as of course content that is going to be on land and of course we see a different sort of amount here this is one of the uh, land mounts that of course moves a bit faster on land than it does underwater and they show a bunch of different messes they've i think i've seen about 
maybe 10 or 12 different mounts so far and they're that and i don't just mean like different skins like they're just really have a wide a diversity when it comes to like the different mounts that they have as you can see here there's a turtle there looks like a velociraptor there's another um mount here i believe a little bit later on they'll show like a dragon you can see the velociraptor here there's also a sort of dragon mount there's of course fishing that's in the game there's, and of course there's a wide a wide uh, variety of content that of course the game is going to have we got 22 we do get to see uh, that they talk about that they're, they're going to have a lot of different mounts you can see there's another mount here this is, i don't not sure what kind of animal this is um it looks like a cross between like a horse and like what is it uh an aardvark the ones with the really long noses that eat ants i forget what those animals are called and anyway well, one thing i did like was that there was a little bit of a throwback again the first like 35 to 40 minutes is primarily talking about the different sort of mounts that they're going to have the different sort of features some will have like armor some might have like more stamina etc if you're really interested I'll, of course i'll leave the link uh, for the whole video there's one really nice mount that i did want to showcase here where they're showing the um basically the content uh, prior to it being rendered we see that there's a different different wide variety and this, this is like a ramp some sort of a ram mount that they were discussing but one thing that i did really want to discuss was a little bit of a throwback we're really seeing uh the lead developer there steven who was previously an a lineage 2 player right so i played lineage 2 for years when most people were getting into uh when most people were getting into world of warcraft i was getting into lineage 2 lineage 2 was an open world free-for-all uh, pvp game it was open world pvp it wasn't like um like like uh what's it called like elder scrolls online where you kind of have like these different factions that you can choose from and then basically people are split off and you can't you know fight each other one of the things that i really liked about lineage 2 was maybe you've seen like you're grinding in a specific area maybe you're grinding you know in an in a, in a open area or you're grinding a certain dungeon that's open to the world and basically someone else comes in and starts stealing your mobs and there's basically nothing you can do except ask the person to leave or the person just stays there and then they continue to grief you one of the great things about lineage 2 which is also going to be available in ashes of creation is the ability to flag on players and so when you when you actually watch a lot of these different videos steven often does reminisce about his time of course in lineage 2 and so a lot of that is taken not just from their pvp perspective but also in the way that they're creating different um outfits or different armors the way they look they'll look very similar but he just goes on to discuss later on that a, a huge part of what's going on with and how they're designing the different outfits the different armor armor systems for basically for the different races they're all going to have some sort of a similarities but they're going to have uh differences that are basically race inherited by the races and so i thought that was a really good point i'll play that little clip for you um, um, and a lot of a lot of games have, have kind of taken that direction as a matter of fact you know the inspiration for that particular approach came from my experiences with with lineage 2 i really enjoyed how they um you know kind of had subtle differences between different races and genders wearing the same thematic set um and you would see obviously a crossover with the theme whether that be um you know the materials and or textures and the color palettes like that would maintain across races and genders uh but there would be essentially a different representation of that armor uh, at 50 we do get to see a wide variety of course of different sort of armors as you can see here as a there's a wide variety of different armors for of course uh, different races etc they, they have a lot of concept art here i really did like there was a this looks like a medium armor there was another medium armor i think it was right here this looks like a really cool medium armor set and of course these are rendered in the game and of course they talk a little bit about how character creation is going to be at 54 we do get a little bit of a discussion on the pvp flag system and bounty system um, i'll leave that up for you guys to hear they talk a little bit about aoe aoe caps which is something that people who have played eso are very familiar with for years one of the main problems with pvp in terms of how is it that small scale can basically fight larger scale people who want to run around in a zerg and of course it was typically through the use of aoe abilities and in eso one of the worst changes that they ever made was making 
AOE caps. And of course, someone asked that question in one of the Q and A's. And they, of course, they say that they're, of course, leaning away from AOE caps as they've kind of hinted other games, maybe ESO that have utilized that. And of course, they've seen it you know, act in a very bad way that, of course, is not in favor of PvP. And I like that. I like that. A lot of the discussion typically revolves around the player versus player interaction as this is basically a open world free for all MMO and it has a lot of PVE content. But of course, the underlying is always going to be versus that player versus player and that player versus environment interaction. One of the things, unfortunately, that we saw New World lean away from, which was very evident within, if you got to play the, like the weekend, it was like 10 days of New World, it felt underwhelming. There was a lot of content and a lot of danger that was missing from the world. When you actually played the game, it felt from their perspective of what they said was that the, the spine of the game was supposed to be that sort of entering into a dangerous world, not just from the environment, but also from the player. And with the removal of the pvp because pvp in that game is primarily flagged what you did see is many people shied away from pvp and even those who did flag typically made use of uh, the stupid staff ability that would basically you know, person would zoom away and you wouldn't be able to catch them so they would receive the reward of being pvp flagged but did everything possible to avoid pvp and of course this is not the direction that we're seeing ashes of creation going and i am very thankful for that because it's been so long since we have really had a true open world pvp since early wow and of course lineage 2. one thing that they do discuss about you know in this video is of course the bounty system so when you kill someone who does not flag back right so normally as you see the letters on the person's name are white when you flag on someone, those letters will change color to purple. If that person does not flag back, that stating that they are looking for a PvP interaction, and you subsequently kill that person or whoever kills that person, their name will turn red, indicating that they have been flagged by the bounty system as a PKer. And of course, that person can be displayed on the map. So if you're someone who wants to role play as a bounty killer, you can do that within the game. If you want to role play um, as someone who runs around as a murderer, you can do that too. But there is a system in place to protect individuals uh, who don't want to PvP. And of course, it is called the PK system, their bounty system. And within that, someone had asked a question about whether um, can a guildie basically kill another guildie who has flagged. If you've killed someone and you shout out in guild and you're like, hey, I need someone to come over here and kill me so I don't lose all my stuff. So someone within your guild can, of course, come over and kill you and then pick up all of your items. That's one of the drawbacks of being a PKer is that if you're killed while you're red, then you basically can drop anything within your bag as well as anything that is equipped. One of the things that was supposed to be introduced into New World that was subsequently removed because of catering to the super casuals who are who want the reward of PvP but don't want the downside of PvP. Similarly, that happened in ESO. In ESO, there was supposed to be a bounty system uh, that was supposed to come with the Thieves Guild because people wanted to role play as a thief and as a murderer uh, and killing NPCs in the streets. But what they didn't want was the repercussions of being, in essence, hunted by other players. And so that got removed and it basically nullified the whole danger uh, of being, you know, basically a role playing as a murderer or as a as a killer within within a local town because there was no downfall except of basically avoiding NPCs that were super easy to avoid from the very beginning because you can outrun them and they have a because of the leash mechanic so it really ruined what could have been a very interesting experience especially for individuals who enjoy um, role playing so that's one of the things that they talk about where they had asked well can guildies kill other players and of course the answer was yes like i said you can kill your own guild members you can kill people within your alliance your allies because there's a guild and then the guild can ally with other guilds so that they're not automatically flagged they have gvg where you don't have to worry about control flagging like pressing control and then uh doing some sort of an action to flag on someone people who you are at, at war with you don't have to worry about flagging your name doesn't get flagged you don't have to worry about killing them and then your name going red because they're basically f automatically flagged 
against your guild and of course that was a that was something that was in lineage 2 as well and of course they also touch on crafting in most games that i've seen typically crafting doesn't take a huge sort of like crafting you can usually do in the beginning there's like little little things for crafting here and there it's typically for making money but in ashes of creation the developers have said that creating especially when it comes to like end game gear will typically revolve as well around crafting so like legendary crafting legendary gear well, basically you'll have to seek after a legendary crafter and so that makes crafting even in end game uh useful if you're an end game crafter you'll be able to make use of your craft basically throughout the entirety of the game another thing that of course that is discussed with crafting is typically in most games there's always like a, a degradation when it comes to your gear and typically you just go to an npc you pay for your gear to get repaired and it's more like a way uh, to gold to do something about gold like to, to just a gold sink of course, Ashes of Creation does something that's a little bit different. What they choose to do is instead of just basically utilizing gold, like in most games, instead, whatever your, excuse me, whatever your gear is made out of, it will require you to farm um, that particular resource, right? So if you're wearing leather, you're, uh, you're going to need leather and leather scraps to basically repair your gear, um, as well as, of course, gold. And so what this does is it makes um, those who want to hunt for resources relevant not just for new players who come into the game but of course also for the long-term players so that they can basically maintain their gear so one of the things that i like it was something that we did see in it was something that we did see in um in new world but i did not like the way new world did it especially because the game was primarily designed or originally was primarily designed around player versus player around pvp but then of course you needed repair kits and the only way that you could get repair kits was of course by going out pvp and, and hoping to get a drop so that you can then break that down or basically craft and then destroy items so that you can get repair so that basically you can go out and pvp and i'm thankful that they did it a little bit differently but of course not just the typical generic way that most mmos do it which is just you go up to any npc and then you go repair gear and it just basically costs you gold so i kind of like that it makes it add it basically adds to the economy so that individuals who just like to go out and maybe you just want to role play as a farmer you just want to role play and create a resource business you can do that in ashes of creation if you want to role play as a thief, you can do that in Ashes of Creation. If you want to role play as bandits on a highway, you can do that in Ashes of Creation. If you want to role play as a bounty hunter hunting bandits, you can do that in Ashes of Creation. So if you want to role play as a bandit on the highway, basically extorting people for gold or tell them that or state that you're going to kill them on the highway well that's an that's, that's something that you can do this is basically what i was able to glean from this video and some of the other videos of, of the content that they've put out i'm looking forward to the game actually um, looking forward to for that open beta or for the closed alphas as i did back the game way back when on kickstarter i really like what i see i'm looking forward to playing the game i'm sure most of you who are watching this video are too as really we need a really solid mmo the mmo experience has been a little dead over the past couple of years i think most people have gone back to wow because it's really just the best thing that's out there elder scrolls online is kind of meant especially at this point with a lot of the lag especially if you're really interested in some of that end game pvp there really isn't a lot that's out there in terms of the mmo space as far as what we have right now that's basically gonna be the video for this time Appreciate you guys watching. Of course, if you like the content, be sure to subscribe if this is your first time here so that you don't miss out on future content. And of course, if you like the video, be sure, of course, to hit the like button so that it gets recommended by other people. And I'll check you out next time. Thanks for watching.